Uh, so most of you have probably already heard me talk about essential geodetic variables. So I'll just give a brief overview and status report today. Uh, next slide, please. So the concept of an essential variable was uh, developed by the uh, climate community, by the Global Climate Observing System back in the 1990s. And um, in the 1990s, the climate observing networks were in jeopardy um, of, of, of continuing. Uh, uh, stations were being closed, tire networks were being shut down. And so the climate community uh, developed this concept of an essential variable to um, to argue uh, what observations absolutely have to continue to be made in order to understand the climate. So, um, and this was done in order to provide uh, you know, um, uh, for what, what for what needs to be observed, you know, in the face of the declining um, core networks. And so what they developed for the, you know, they defined an essential climate variable is some observation that is critical to characterizing the Earth's climate, okay? And so this provides the observational evidence needed to understand and predict, you know, the evolution of the climate guide mitigation and adaptation measures, assess the risks and enable attribution of climate, climatic events to underlying causes and underpin climate services. Um, and um, as a guide in, in deciding what variables should be considered to be essential, right, well, it has to be relevant, right, uh, it has to be feasible uh, to observe, and it has to be, you know, cheap to observe, it's got to be cost effective. And uh, so they came up with a set of, of climate variables, um, a list of them, and, uh, the, and it turned out to be quite useful uh, within the climate community. They were able to go to their uh, sponsors, their funding um, organizations organizations and argue that, you know, these are the variables that we absolutely have to keep observing if we're going to understand climate change. And with that success, um, it was adopted by many, many other communities, uh, first by the Global Ocean uh, um, Observing System, uh, who identified essential ocean observables, but now by many, many others. There's, there are biodiversity uh, variables, for example. Uh, next slide, please. So let's give uh, one example of a um, of an essential ocean variable, uh, the sea surface height, um, and uh, and how uh, the global ocean observing system uh, uses this variable. So they actually so the name of the variable is sea surface height, but they um, associate other quantities, other variables to it. So they have what they call the sub-variable, which would be a, a sea surface height gradient, for example. Um, then they have variables that are derived from that, right? A derived variable or product like open upper ocean heat content. Then they have supporting variables, you know, variables that are needed to support the uh, measurement of sea surface height. So this would be like a geoid, uh, geodetic data, a gravity measurement, for example. And they also give a contact uh, for where more information can be obtained about that variable, um, uh, where measurement, where the observations can be downloaded from, for example. Uh, uh, and, and so this kind of classification scheme, I think that, you know, that, that the global ocean observing system applied to their um, essential ocean variables might actually be useful uh, for, the, uh, um, for, for us in geodesy when we determine, define the essential geodetic variables. So next slide, please. So the idea here is to um, adapt, ad adapt to this concept of an essential variable to, um, to our needs, to the uh, geodetic uh, communities with um, 
to define a set of essential geodetic variables. Um, and so uh, following on what these other communities have done, we can we could consider an essential geodetic variable to be an observed variable that's crucial to characterizing the geodetic properties of the Earth and that are key to sustainable geodetic observations. So, for example, you might consider the position of some reference object like a ground station or a radio source uh, to be an essential geodetic variable. Certainly the Earth orientation parameters should be considered to be um, an essential geodetic variables, and should you know gravity measurements either ground-based or space-based. So, so a number of you know of our observed variables, I think, really should be considered essential. Um, and once you've defined that list of essential geodetic variables, you can do more, right? You can um, assign requirements to each um, of those variables, uh, requirement on its accuracy. Uh, on its spatial and temporal resolution, on, on how timely the observation needs to be available, the stability of the observation of, of the of the observation of that variable um, over time, um, and once and and then you can, um, de and then once you've assigned requirements to the fundamental variables, then you can derive requirements on uh, products that depend upon that variable, such as uh, the reference frame, which depends upon station position observations, or the you know, or, or the or the celestial reference frame, which depends upon radio source coordinates, um, and you can even derive the requirements on the infrastructure that is needed to observe that variable. So how you know precise or accurate does the observation need to be? And then with that, that once you have those requirements, that could then be used to update uh, the GIGOS 2020 book. Um, and, and this is, uh, you know, a, like a bottoms up approach to deriving, to deriving requirements. So you look at, you know, the observations and, and flow the requirements up to the, you know, derived products like the frame. Uh, and this, of course, this bottoms up approach would complement the top down approach that was used um, and determining the requirements given in the GS 2020 book, where we looked at the user needs. You know, what does the user need um, um, in terms of accuracy on some observation in order to support, say, um, sea level rise studies? Um, so uh, a committee within the Bureau of Products and Standards uh, was uh, the, was um, created in order to. Uh, create this list of essential variables and assign requirements to them and the derived products. And this committee consists of representatives of the IAG services, commissions, intercommission committees, and focus areas. Uh, next, please. And so, um, so the status of the work, so um, so the uh, sort of a foundation uh, for the work of the committee has been um, established by uh, the Bureau of Product and Standards and their um, list of geodetic products that um, we heard about yesterday and, and earlier today. Uh, there are currently 23 of these products and um, uh, and you can see many of the usual suspects there, Earth orientation parameters, uh, for example. Um, next, please. Um, so if, and so I, I think with this, List of products determined by the Bureau of Products and Standards. Then the the um, task of the Committee on Essential Geodetic Variables. The next task is to map this list of products into um, into this essential variable framework. So you might, uh, if we consider as an example of the Earth orientation parameters, and let me just talk about uh, polar motion, for example. So polar motion could be considered to be you know, the essential um, uh, geodetic variable. Uh, uh, some variable might be, say, uh, the rate of change of polar motion. 
a uh, derived product might be the um, um, the excitation functions, the polar motion excitation functions, which is needed to um, which which is based upon both polar motion and the, and its rate of change, and uh, then an associated variable might be the time arrival period in Q, which is also needed to um, estimate the uh, polar motion excitation function. So you could easily map the Earth orientation product into the um, essential variable framework um, um, uh, following the guidelines uh, established by the Global Ocean uh, Observer System. Um, next slide, please. Let's see. Um, um, and you could do something similar with, uh, uh, yeah, okay, let's, let's go one more, please. One more slide, yeah. So you could do the same thing with um, station positions and the terrestrial reference frame, right? So the station position would be the fundamental product and the terrestrial reference frame would be a derived product. And so you could assign requirements on how well a station position have to would have to be observed and then flow that up to a requirement on the derived terrestrial reference frame, uh, for example. And I think actually um, that is um, my last uh, slide. So as I say, this was just a quick overview of the concept um, and where we are right now. Um, so I think a good foundation has been laid with the Bureau of Products and Standards in coming up with this a uh, list of geodetic products and um, the committee's task um, will now be to map this list into the uh, central variable framework and start assigning requirements to uh, those variables. Um, so that's what I had prepared. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. So thank you very much, Richard. So are there any questions or comments? So, um, Richard, I, I do have, que have a question. How, how do you the, see the link to the other two observing system, to the climate and ocean observing system? So, um, there are several uh, essential variables listed where we also have uh, important contributions from geodesy, for example, sea level, ice mass changes, groundwater, etc. Do you think that it makes sense that these uh, variables are also listed as uh, essential geodetic variables to strengthen the link between the observing systems? Oh, yes, most definitely. They should be also listed as essential geodetic variables. Uh, so sea surface height um, is considered you know, a um, essential ocean variable, but it's also considered to be an essential climate variable. And we should certainly consider it to be an essential geodetic variable. And that does, um, as you say, uh, reinforce the interaction between these different um, uh, systems, between the climate, the oceans, and, and geodesy. And that um, interaction should be strengthened by, um, by, uh, by including um, uh, these variables in more than one uh, list. Okay, thanks Richard.